Manchester United hosted Chelsea at home over the weekend and it was a nil-nil draw. Uh, a pretty boring affair, a pretty tight, tense game for the first 15, 10 minutes. Both teams, you know, had a lot riding on this game. Both teams probably needed a clean sheet. Both teams probably needed reassurance that the defenders could defend. And both team managers are under a lot of pressure. Um, there is a common feeling amongst a lot of neutrals that one of either um, Solskjaer or Lampard will lose their job this season. It's just a kind of betting game in terms of who goes first if it's down to just pure coaching ability you know it's easy to say maybe Frank Lampard kind of you know is ahead of Solskjaer just mostly based on the type fact that he's been in the game for less amount of time I think Solskjaer has been managing for what 10 years or so is it or something along those kind of lines he's been managing or in around or in around leading a team around that time and I think Lampard might be coming up to three or four years he's not been managing that long he kind of got fast-tracked of course due to his legendary status as a player but you know they're in terms of coaching ability they're both in the same sort of level but maybe Lampard's got a higher ceiling but still um, considering what he's basically done at Chelsea I'm, I've got my doubts on that as well but anyway back to the game a pretty boring game for the most part not one for the neutrals um i guess if you're a defender of either side you're going to be happy with your performance but again how happy can you be when there was no real attacking threat or consistent bit of bits of pressure that really will test the defenders um it was really a game that you know there's not much analysis to be led to it but i guess the common things to kind of pick out would be the lineup i think um most fans you know prior to actually watching the game would have thought the lineup would have been worrying you know we had the standard back five that you kind of know and love and then in front of that back five we had two sitting midfielders in Scott McTominay and Fred and then we had in front of those you had um Mata well in front of those you had uh Fernandez playing in the number 10 position Bruno Fernandez and then you had one Mata and Daniel James playing on the wings or providing width and also additional support to the lone striker in Marcus Rashford now of course Rashford's playing up front because Martial suspended and obviously um, Cavani is still working his way up to full match fitness so there is something to be said for you know just doing the best you can for the options available now would you still play Marcus Rashford up front on his own if you had an actual system that brought the best out of the attacking players? Maybe not. Maybe even someone like Anigalo, even though he doesn't seem to be the, the favourite of Solskjaer anymore, he seems to have called his interest. He seems to have, you know, the love affair with Igalo has still, uh, you know, uh, died down over the last couple of games, which is understandable considering maybe his last two appearances weren't the best. But again, should he really be blamed when he's coming into a team that has over 10 changes? You know, I find it a bit difficult to, when you're judged that way. But again, you know, we move on. The lineup I had an issue with mostly because of the personnel. Um, and it's hard to kind of wrangle. On one side, I was one of the people that was very critical that Solskjaer was only picking the best players and not necessarily picking the best combinations, similar to what Gareth Southgate is doing with England. He just has his favourites and then he picks the best players in a set situation or he tries to force as many of those players on the pitch, you know, such as the, um, what's his name? Uh, the Liverpool right back and Carl Walker playing in the same team. Do you know what I mean? There needs to be some idea behind, okay, who suits this team better and just play that person and then have the other players on the bench to bring on, you know, if you need extra firepower. So with that being said, I'm not mad at only going Soul Shark going for this lineup and deciding hey i need two sitting mid defenders and two, two sitting um defensive midfielders and scott mctominay and fred in order for the front four to work cool and then for the front four to work i also need players that are going to be able to track back so then you play one matter and daniel james cool i get the rationale behind it my only issue with it is if anything this lineup definitely does highlight some of Solskjaer's indeficiencies in terms of his coaching ability and his adaptability in terms of how he's able to adapt his um, formation and his tactics to the opponent and basically make and, and mostly his in-game his lack of in-game management that's what I would basically say um, I'd say this lineup isn't necessarily you know it's risk averse it's a bit safe you're not really um, posing any different questions to Chelsea you're not making them think you're not pulling people out of positions it's a it's a system that essentially is there to cover the deficiencies of Victor Lindelof and Harry Maguire which is the main issue I have with the lineup 
you're only playing two defensive midfielders because you don't trust Lindelof and Maguire to handle themselves at the at their back and keep the balls away from our box. Basically, you need two defenders, two center defenders to basically screen the both of them, which is the real problem. If we had a commanding center back, which we hoped Maguire would have been, but he's not that guy, which is why we're having this conversation about getting another player to compliment him which is insane right we spent 80 plus million on a center back an england center back in you know england captain um captain of manchester united now and now we need to sign another defender to make him look good insane but let's let's move on you get another defender back to uh, to improve him and then that would maybe free up one of the defensive midfielders because I'm still not really sold on having McTominay and Fred play there because I think you only can play one just to free up another position so you can have one of your better players on the pitch. And if you have to choose between the two, I'll go for Fred all day long. McTominay can't play football, right? He can harry players. He's maybe good at you know providing aggression. Uh, you know, maybe he's really good in terms of defending set pieces. Um, he seems to have a bit of an engine on him, but in terms of playing the ball out from the back, um, he's really, really woeful on the ball. There was an instance, I think, in the beginning of the first half, maybe around 15 minutes, where he breaks up the play, picks it up, tries to pass it through the lines, misplaces the pass, then he gets the ball back again, and he tries to play another ball through the lines, and he misplaces it again. And these are just easy balls, like 10 to 15 yards in front of him. Nothing too crazy. And he just couldn't complete it. So he doesn't have that little bit of now. And again, it's not his game. It's not fair to accept expect that from him. But I think if we had better players, if we had better commanding centre-backs, we wouldn't need to play Freddie McTominay. So the game just went, as you would imagine, very tight affair, very little chances. Um, each team, look at the stats here. 14 shots to Chelsea, 6. 4 shots on target to Chelsea's 1. 51 possession to Chelsea's 49. Very tight game, um, even on the passes, um, even on the pass accuracy. Fouls, just about the same. Yellow cards, we've got 3, they got 1. No reds, 2 offsides, 0 for Chelsea, and 9 corners to their 6. But a fairly dull game. We didn't necessarily learn anything um, about both teams. If anything, again, it just goes to highlight that both managers are under an extreme amount of pressure. They both needed to basically get out of this game unscathed and a nil-nil draw was probably the best that we could have hoped for. Um, of course, the conversation to come out of this is of the Donny van der Beek issue. How can you sign a player of his quality and have him on the bench? Same goes for Paul Pogba. And like I said, I maintain that I think no one like it's fair to have two conflicting ideas in your head you want to back the manager you want to ensure that he does he does as great a job as possible if that means that we have to support him and just make sure the team knows that we're behind them fair play but we're also allowed to be rational and say do we really think Solskjaer is the guy to get us back to winning trophies is he really the guy to get us back to winning league titles probably not and if that isn't the case what were we waiting for? Should we wait for him to go on a dip and a run of really bad games and then change the manager? Or should we try and get someone in who can do the best, who can basically bring the best out of the players that we have and operate under a semi-tight budget? If we believe what we read in the papers, what we see on social media, Solskjaer didn't get a lot of his targets this summer. He probably didn't get maybe one of them. All the targets that he got were basically transfers that were made above him, right? If that's the case, whether it's Ed Woodward or somebody else, it doesn't look like he signed many of the players that are basically come through the door, especially when you look at the issue happening with Donny van der Beek. So if that's the case, the criteria for the manager that we get in next will maybe have to have that in mind. If we're not going to get a sport ball director and that news has gone completely dead as per usual, whenever we have a run of really bad games, the conversation around the sporting director comes back up again. The moment we win a bunch of games, that conversation disappears. So if we're never going to get a football director in because Eduardo doesn't want to let go of the reins of control, we have to have a criteria for our next coach that involves working underneath that structure and also working with the players we have available just because there's going to be no opportunity to kind of upgrade them um, to a level that's needed in order to get us back to where we want to get to. But I still think with the players that we have available, a competent coach, a coach of a system, a coach of a style of play could get the best out of them and actually get us to play a more attractive brand of football. Because at the moment, watching United play, just from the eye test, forget what the back and manager um, Strefford Paddock lot say about Solskjaer. Just from the eye test, we don't look an attract. We don't look like an attractive team. We don't play attractive football. 
um we kind of bore the pan you know essentially it's quite boring watching us play football unless we're playing some of the big guns and all our individual players seem to step up because they want to show up and prove uh, you know playing against their peers or people that they think that they're on the same level as so, you know case in point the psg game but we can week out in the prem there is a significant lack of identity when it comes to the way that we attack i couldn't tell you what formation we had when edison cavani came on towards the end i couldn't tell you what the rationale was behind playing bruno fernandez on the right wing i couldn't tell you why playing daniel james the first half because somehow he tracks back but he doesn't offer anything going forward why that makes sense i couldn't tell you why don't even debate can't get a game for playing for this united team i couldn't tell you that and the reason is because we don't have a way of playing we have a manager who can only pick the players that he thinks work best for the two system that he plays the one that you saw here against chelsea and also the one the formation that we played against psg either five at the back or four at the back and there's really less there's really um not much not much variation in that kind of lineup and it's the personnel as well like there should be an occasion where bruno fernandez doesn't play as a number 10 and van der Beek probably does or you swap out mctominay for matic or you change the left backs or the you know the right but whatever there should be an occasion where that sort of thing happens but at the moment whenever there's a time for a change in personnel he seems to do five plus changes to the entire team and then get the second string guys who haven't played the run of games they end up performing really poorly and then the fans get on their back again so at the moment as it stands, for me personally, I still think Solskjaer gives them the guys to take us forward. I think that's blatantly clear, especially playing against a Chelsea side that weren't the best, right? They weren't necessarily at the races. They have a lot of deficiencies inside their own club. Um, they've signed a whole heap of players who haven't necessarily gelled. They're playing an interim manager. It doesn't look like he can handle these big names. And there's a lot of uncertainty around the club. If ever there was a perfect time to face Chelsea, this would be it. And we couldn't do it. We didn't perform we didn't have necessarily have the 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 idea of what to do to break them down. We had the tools, I could say. I could say we could have still scored, even with that first half team. We could have inflicted some damage in them, but there was no consistent pattern of play to break up Chelsea, to kind of break the lines, to get them moving across the pitch and opening up some spaces. Nothing was happening in that regard. So that leads me to believe that ultimately Solskjaer isn't really going to succeed no matter how much some of these you know top reds want to convince you that you should back him and somehow magically backing him is going to turn him into Pep Guardiola it's never happening he's not that kind of a coach unfortunately so I guess we're going to have to for the short term um just lump it I'm not too sure who ends up getting fired first between Lampard and Skull Solskjaer. Probably not um, important. I'm, glad, I'm I'm just more interested to see how both teams develop throughout the season and who ends up getting the teams to gel the best. I guess if you are taking a just a small, you know, sample size of what's happened, here, you could probably say Solskjaer's done a better job at United. But again, he's been in the job longer. But I'm eager to see what happens all the end of the season with the players we have available. But yeah, that was the game. United nil, Chelsea's nil. A bit of a boring one, really. Nothing more to report there. We're both terrible teams trying to find our way. And um, especially in a quite lackluster season so far where it looks like the title is really up for grabs. Liverpool aren't performing to a level. Man City aren't performing to a level. They seem like they've you know gotten, had enough of playing under Pep Guardiola's system. The motivation maybe isn't there. Again, Liverpool have lost Virgil van Dijk for the entire season, so there's a big um, opportunity for there for change. Of course, Arsenal with a new manager in Arteta. There's loads of things that are really making me think that this might be the year where there might be a bit of a dark horse in terms of winning the league. And if ever there's a chance to take advantage for Chelsea or Man United, this would be it. But again, um, crappy ownership, in, especially in the case of United, and bang average coaches in both teams has led to a situation where we're both sort of like fighting for scraps, basically. But yeah, United zero, Chelsea zero, boring game. I want my hour back or hour and plus back. <laughs>